Hi, this is Bill for Sparky Channel. Today, I'd like to answer a question from a viewer about marked controlled receptacles. He was wondering, in what cases do we have to use marked controlled receptacles as opposed to regular receptacles? That is, in some cases, we can just use a regular receptacle and break off the hot tab on the receptacle and use it for what we call a half-hot receptacle. pliers, and grab the tab real well and now you're going to just go back and forth back and forth see back and forth back and forth and there it is it broke right off that's very necessary for wiring a half hot receptacle but other times we are required by code to use a designated marked controlled receptacle half hot receptacles are commonly used so that a person can enter a room turn on a switch and a lamp that is plugged into the controlled portion of the half-hot receptacle will turn on. I have several videos on this general topic, including how to wire a half-hot receptacle with power to the receptacle, half-hot receptacle with power to switch, how to wire a half-hot receptacle in a 1957 house, marked controlled receptacles, installation, 2023 NEC code and diagram, and how to install a marked controlled receptacle. I'll put links in my video description for all of these videos. You should be able to wire the half hot and marked controlled receptacles using these videos. But in this video, I'd like to concentrate on when a marked controlled receptacle must be used in place of a regular half hot receptacle. Over the years, a regular receptacle has been used in a residential setting in an area where a lamp would usually be. In this case, you would enter the living room, turn on the switch, and the lamp would come on. But in modern day, we use these kind of receptacles in conjunction with PIR switches, which stands for passive infrared switches, to automatically turn on office machinery, such as copy machines, etc., when somebody enters the room. Then, when someone exits the room, this machinery is automatically turned off. This is to generate a savings on utilities. One example of a PIR switch would be this Leviton occupancy sensor switch. It could be used in conjunction with a marked controlled receptacle which operates office equipment. First, let's go to the 2023 NEC code book to find out what exactly is required. After that, I'll give you examples which should increase your understanding. Here is the 2023 NEC for marked controlled receptacles. All non-locking type 125 volt 15 and 20 amp receptacles that are controlled by an automatic control device or that incorporate control features that remove power from the receptacle for the purpose of energy management or building automation shall be permanently marked with the symbol shown in figure 406.3F and the word controlled. For receptacles controlled by an automatic control device, the marking shall be located on the receptacle face and visible after installation. In both cases, where a multiple receptacle device is used, the required marking of the word controlled and symbol shall denote which contact devices are controlled. Exception, the marking shall not be required for receptacles controlled by a wall switch that provide the required room lighting outlets as permitted by 210.70. And this is from the 2023 handbook. Many energy efficiency codes require that a percentage of installed 125 volt 15 and 20 ampere receptacles be controlled by automatic means such as time clocks or occupancy devices. Controlled receptacles are required to be marked to indicate which receptacles will be automatically de-energized by the controller. This allows a different receptacle like a computer receptacle to be selected if the load must be supplied during overnight hours. And in figure 406.3F, they show the symbol that they want on each and every marked 
controlled receptacle. So my interpretation of the code is that if you just have a regular single pole switch and you would like to control a receptacle that has a light plugged into it, a lamp or some other kind of light, then it's okay to just use a regular receptacle and break off the hot tab and use it as a half hot receptacle. In any other instance, you're gonna to need to use a marked controlled receptacle. Let's say you would like to control a copy machine with a switch on the wall as you come in and you're gonna plug it into a receptacle. Well, that would have to be a marked controlled receptacle and you plug it into the marked controlled receptacle part. And so in this case, it would be necessary to have the marked controlled receptacle, not a regular receptacle. Let's say you would like to control your copy machine with an occupancy sensor switch so that as soon as someone walks out the door for the night, the copy machine turns off. Well, in that case, you would have to plug it into a marked controlled receptacle. Let's say you had an occupancy sensor for the switch and you wanted to control a copy machine and a coffee maker. So in that case, you would need a duplex controlled receptacle. What if your authority having jurisdiction or AHJ says that all controlled receptacles must be marked controlled receptacles? The answer in that case is that you use the marked controlled receptacles. How about if you use a timer switch to control a lamp? Yep, you're gonna need to use a marked controlled receptacle. Another important point is that the switches and the mark controlled receptacles have to be heavy duty enough to carry the loads for whatever you're going to be running with them. So I've selected here a 20 amp Leviton mark controlled receptacle. It is heavy duty and industrial grade. It is rated to one half horsepower and the PIR switch that I showed is rated to 1800 watts maximum. So if you're planning to upgrade your office or your home office, be sure to buy devices that match your power needs. And remember, once I got done reading the code, the rest of it was my interpretations. So if your interpretation is different, if you read the code a little differently, put a comment in the comment section. You're welcome to give your opinion. We're all learning for each other here. So I hope this video was helpful. Thanks.